Hello folks, we're back. And welcome to your next exciting installment of Damien vs. Rust. Yes, you guessed it folks, it's the Red Arrow. And it is our left hand side, rear, what do they call those things? Swing arm pockets or something like that. It's where these things go. Anyway, don't know if we showed you this, but I got the subframe stripped for in the maybe during the hiatus from the last episode. Anyway, we've been involved with the grinder this morning and uh, removed all of that fun packed stuff. So that is what is left of the left side um, trailing arm pocket. So up here. We've been prepping, and uh, as always, with our old friend and longtime sponsor of the channel, Roast, uh, when we get in there, things are always worse. So we got all this stripped out, got the old one chopped out. Let's uh, we get a bit better light in there for you. Oh, Roast, out of the way for a minute. I'm trying to show everyone your brilliance. So up there, we'd also some Roast. So I've been hitting it with some Genolite uh, to see if we can kill that uh, before, we, um, before we go much further. Now the far side, as you may remember from the last time, is all done. I've still got to get in here and just strip off these old fuel tank mounts and then use the stripping disc on here, which is uh, this guy here is much better at removing the rust. So I'm going to be hitting that in a few minutes while the old uh, Genolite does its magic in there because there's no real way short of cutting out all of that material um, to physically get in there at that. So I'm hoping the Genolite uh, will do the trick there for me. So over here, we've got our um, replacement pocket. And I've just uh, put some coal galve on the bottom side of that. And uh, that will be getting ready to be installed where we've chopped out the old spring pocket. As you can probably see, let me show you the old sky here. Rust, longtime sponsor of our channel, uh, works hand in hand with a sponsor I'm hoping to attract. And that's rain. Because rain and rust work hand in hand. Okay, folks, so sorry to say there is a bit of a jump cut uh, in here. It's a couple of days since I actually made the last clip where I was starting this. We've got a work done. We've got the trailing arm pocket changed out. Got it all welded in, seam sealered and uh, stone chipped. Um, as usual with me, you know, there's always time pressures, the stuff going on, and unfortunately the video is kind of the first thing that actually suffers. Um, on top of that as well, this kind of work is not really what I'm, you know, it's not really what I'm on here making videos for. It's more the EV stuff than fixing rust on an E36. Folks, there's a hundred videos out there showing you how to do a much better job than I do. Um, so here, what we're trying to do at the minute is I'm trying to balance getting the Panzer uh, driving back on the road again so that the barn will be uh, free so that we can bring this beast um, into the barn for winter. And in order to do that, we need to have the rear, sub, the rear subframe sorted out and back in but before we can even do that to say we need to sort out all the corrosion problems here now, as you have seen on the last video uh, a little bit of this one uh we're using the race army uh kits for the uh to replace the rusted out um oh i keep forgetting the name, but trailing arm pockets so far side was done before, this side is done. I'll show you in there, there's not a lot to see. It's just a load of 
black stone shape at the minute but um so the other uh part of it that i've been doing then is i attacked the um subframe with a hammer and a blowtorch and i got pretty medieval on it and uh, managed to get all of the old uh, bushes and um, spherical bearings and all that crap beaten out of them. Uh, so I got to figure out my next move there. Do I try and tackle the rust myself with a combination of kind of stripping discs and wire wheels and a needle scaler? Uh, or do I see if I can get it sandblasted? I'd very much prefer the latter uh, because there's a lot of little nooks and crannies on the subframe and the control arms. Um, yeah, you'd get in there, particularly with the needle scaler, um, but I don't know. So that one's open uh, at the minute. That's an open question as to how we'll do that. Um, I'm going to do, again, if kind of finances and time allows and so on, I'm probably going to do the wheel bearings and the drive shaft boots and all that kind of thing in the um, in the trailing arms because there's not there's no point having all this stuff out and kind of not do that. Uh, so fingers crossed we'll be able to do that. Now the wheel arches and the side skirts uh, we will do hopefully during winter when the car is in the barn, uh, but. Primarily, as I say now, what we're kind of going to be focusing on is this is pretty much done underneath here. Um, probably another coat of stone chip. And uh, then I've got to re-plumb the hard lines uh, for the brakes in here because I just chopped them. They were rusty. They weren't the best. Uh, so we'll re-plumb the brake hard lines in there with Cupro Nickel uh, line and um, then we can get the subframe to so say that's another little project get that back together get it in here the car's back on its wheels and uh, panzers out of the barn get the red arrow into the barn now, i do have a little surprise for you uh, for the red arrow in the barn so let's go have a look at that now and say a quick hello to the panzer as we're passing by Obviously, Panzer battery. Hello, Panzer battery. Check this puppy out, folks. Hello and welcome to the new motor for the Red Arrow. Now, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, Damien, no. You said we were going to use the Outlander motor. And I did. And I'm sorry. But then this thing popped up. So what is this thing? Well, this is the motor from a Volkswagen e-Golf and it is an 85 kilowatt uh, piece of machinery that was unfortunately in a rather serious smash. And as part of that serious smash, the entire gearbox part of it got trashed off and is nowhere to be found, presumably swept into the side of our road somewhere. And this bracket on the back got trashed off as well. As well. But the motor itself, is completely perfect. Let me see if I can get you folks down here to the rating plate thingy. As you can see, it's a pretty decent motor. Now, in keeping with the budget ideal of our project, this motor here uh, cost me the princely sum of 75 pounds sterling, or approximately 100 euros in today's euro dollar bread or money stuff. Now, the challenge that we have is will be blah, 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 blah. Wow, quality video making, courtesy of Damien. The challenge that we have will be mounting this to our rear wheel drive gearbox. Now, we have a lovely flat surface here to work on with plenty of mounting holes. I'm going to cut off this unnecessary part here. And in there, hopefully you'll be able to see, will you be able to see kind of, oh no, vertical video syndrome, no. 
No. Sorry, folks, may have had some vertical video syndrome. It's terrible. So there is an involute spline in here. So there's a splined part in there with some grease. Uh, <clears throat> lovely. Um, and we need to have a, a shaft do, 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 that will go in there and enable us to connect to our BMW gearbox. So if anyone has any information on what kind of spline pattern or anything else in there, um, answers on a postcard, please. But anywho, this is our motor for the Red Arrow. And I think this will give it a nice uh, little bit of a performance boost um, as well for us. And as I said, it kind of sticks with the budget aspect because um, I, I guess motors and Parts like this, the breakers, yards can't really sell as replacement parts that are pretty much scrap value. So it is unfortunately going to just look pretty boring in here. Um, this is our Race Army uh, spring, uh, not spring pocket, trailing arm pocket kit. Um, in, we've got the same sealer. These are our new bolts uh, for our trailing arm bracket. And pretty much everything else is just pretty much done with black. Uh, Black anti-rust paint, stone chip, we've stripped out all of the rust um, and uh, where we can't really get in at it, we've treated it and uh, just done the best we can with it here. Um, so that's about it. We'll be doing one more coat, I would say, of stone chip around the whole thing. And uh, obviously I'm not doing this bit here because this will be getting cut out when we're doing the side skirts. All right, folks, so do hope you've enjoyed this one. Uh, sorry, it's a little bit sporadic, um, kind of the nature of my uh, projects. Uh, the last couple of months have been extremely busy for me, um, not just with my own EV projects, but a lot of other stuff going on as well. Um, so I haven't been standing still. And we do have more updates for you on the rest of the fleet coming soon. So until that, happy event for you um don't forget to dislike do not share unsubscribe from this ridiculous channel for crying out loud don't check the links in the description particularly those for patreon and paypal and other financial supports because if you financially support me i just buy more of this kind of stuff then i'll buy more cars that actually need more of this kind of stuff and it's a never-ending cycle so don't do it Go away wasps, damn wasps, buy wasps instead. Don't forget your link in the description though for a rust and your discount code. And uh, until next time, happy stone chipping.